they um that they introduced CBC. Which is called CBC they have not integrated sports because my thing was uh Kenya is such a sporting powerhouse I think it's very important to integrate sports as part of the physical education curriculum you know like in so, such a way where talents can start being nurtured where there's funding to start nurturing these talents from a very very early stage we on ask here you know like countries like brazil they already knew about neymar when he was six years old uh how do we fix this um we fix this by enacting legislation that allows you to fund uh sports and development on a broad based social basis the way they do in europe you see the way in the uk whereby uh pe is compulsory and the pe that is compulsory is not just pe ya kugukuru karuko uko schools work with academies schools work with other systems to be able to identify talent and talent is in various sports all the sports that they have out there Now, Louis, this is so profound. I mean, and this is one of the reasons why we got you here because these details that you're giving, I think most Kenyans see the glory, you know, and the goals mm-hmm. uh on the track with all the lights, camera action, uh but they don't know the struggles that these athletes are going through even just to make it um there and then for everyone who's made it there, there's probably at least 10 or 20 who are probably were as good at some point but just were not able to get that boost now you mentioned sporters um and maybe you know like you're going to define who sporters are uh because you once talked to us about um you know like all these foreign agents who are all over the place in Iten uh just looking for for talent which means they're not doing charity they're looking for talent that they know that they that they that they know that talent at the moment doesn't have money but they know that they can grow they can invest in them and grow them and profit out of them winning future races so my question here i know we talk a lot about the government but i i really have uh, totally no hope on government because if they've not been able to understand what Kenyans are saying based on this mandamanos that we've been having for the past uh two months uh, i'm really getting to that point where i'm saying they don't have that brain capacity to be able uh to do something uh like this so my question here is there a way in which maybe corporate sponsors can be taught whereby we can have an entity where corporate sponsors can come in because the idea is invest you know like in a young athlete you know like before wh- who's shown potential you invest in them t- for them to be able to do this diamond leagues like you're talking about what Bahrain is doing for Yavi um invest in them and then in future you know like there's there's business sense you know like once they start winning you will you know like you will get a cut of the profits that will come out of this winning is there anyone who's talking about this or is there any plan to have something of this sort because to me yavi especially is an example of mismanaged talent meaning that you're young you did not make it to the competition so rather than put you in, in some kind of incubator to build you up to be able to make into the next competition you're kind of abandoned you kind of abandoned go by yourself until when the next trials come in so we don't care what you're doing we don't care whether you have a coach we don't care whether you have training but then they just expect you to come back and to perform so louis maybe talk to us is there you know like any ideas or anything of trying to create entities outside government that will circle any of these young talented people whether they've qualified or not for international competition louis so unfortunately not um having sat in a webinar discussion with uh, Catherine Dereba the great wow. um she i believe she owns uh, 
it's a high altitude training center facility in Iten. Mm -hmm. I just happened to pop into, you know, into that session and uh, just to listen to what people are talking about. It was quite an interesting talk of just a few friends who are, who are having a, a chat. And um, you'll find that the government really does not invest in nurturing any of this talent. They will only pick up this talent from high school competitions and um, probably uh, maybe um, primary school competitions of which they'll just ignore and they will not try to nurture them, put them into academies where they can be able to grow. So it is individual uh, uh, athletes who have already participated before or maybe they're already in the game. Like what Omanyala is doing right now with the Sprint Academy that uh, he started last year. He's picking up, you know, the speedsters from various schools and uh, hoping that maybe he can nurture them to become someone in future. Something which the government should have done this from the days of Kennedy Ondieki. Long mm -hmm. time ago in the 90s. Yes. When Kennedy Ondieki was a shining star in 1986. Yes, that's right. Why did we have to wait for Omanyala to show up when he ran in Mumias with no shoes on? It took too damn long. And until today, there is no Sprint Academy. It's a shame. It is a shame. Wow. Um, when you look at uh, Nala Academy in Nanyuki, you know, everybody was saying that it's E10, it is E10, it is E10 somewhere in Wasangishu. That's the only place where you can run. No. Mary Ekiru came from Nanyuki. And she ran against this same Tsegai lady um, in, the, in Accra, Ghana, during the Africa Cup Championships, and uh, no, Africa Championships. And um, she actually came number two after our friend, uh, our sister Tsegai did the same thing that she did to, to, um, to Faith the other day. And Mary Akiru is a very young girl. She is barely, what, 21, 20? And she just came from Nala Academy in Anyuki. Mary Ngugi, has literally nurtured about 28 young girls in Anyuki, a high altitude area, and she's doing it by herself. Already, she has three girls that have given up very high accolades in the international stage, and she's funding it by herself. Where is the government? My goodness. Now, when you look at Catherine Dereba, she's doing it by herself with all her savings, okay? And um, there's another private training um, facility also that is in Iten. I think it's near where my friend, uh, uh, the late rider, the road, uh, the road bike rider used to used to also train with them, but he used to ride the bikes around there, the, the whole yard and stuff. Um, it's owned by one of the last, I think it is, uh, not Terragut, but it was one of the guys who ran in the Mexico Olympics, if I'm not wrong. Um, these are all private Kip Kano, facilities. Kip Choge, uh, Kip Kano. I think maybe Kip Kano, if I'm not yeah. wrong, a name closer to that. Um, so you find that most of these facilities that we have that are churning out these young people, they're all private, and some of them have to pay to be there. Others are allowed to go in there for free, okay? The government does not chime in. In Kaptagat, where um, we have uh, Kamoror, where we have Kipruto, where we have... Uh, um, Kipchoge, where we have um, Our Lady uh, Faith, they, they train in Kaptagat. The government does not really step in to do anything. Those guys, they take care and sort for themselves out. They find themselves cooking ugali and doing all the stuff that they want to by themselves. The government does not even care to make life easier for them. Now, you're talking about sponsorship. For sponsorship purposes, all these corporates, it's business. Business is all about making profits. They will not come and try to nurture you up in order for them to make profits. I mean, we already know that. They don't have time for that. The moment they see you shining out there is that they'll begin knocking at your door and saying, hey, can we use you as our brand ambassador? But if you do not showcase the talent and a winning talent, not just a talent, but a winning talent, corporates do not really care about you. And for the most part, the deals that the corporates do give the Kenyan athletes, they're so substandard. Majority of them are not even taken care of like they should be taken care of. I'm surprised that even when one of the athletes, I think I've, I have had to deal with two athletes that have come to the United States, and uh, one of them was stranded at uh, a hotel lobby because nobody was there to tell him, you know, tell her what she needed to do. She was stuck. She couldn't move. She couldn't speak to anybody. Her English is not, you know, up to par. Her phone was not fully charged. She was struggling to even explain that she needed a charger 
that you can be able to get onto the sockets. There's mm -hmm. no one to assist you. So the person who she's calling was her corporate sponsor in Kenya, but those people are not willing to help her as such. They were not organizing for her to ensure that she can come and participate, which was one of the races that she needed to make a good time in order for her to make it over to the Olympic trials. So we have wow. so many problems here that really do not just they just don't add up. The corporates come in to help these fellows only when they're shining, put their name on it, and then force them to go to social media so that they can go ahead and spread their name out there and say, "Oh, you know, we uh, we are with uh, Search at Korea, and uh, you can uh, phone uh, whatever it is uh, that they are advertising." I don't want to get into details, but I know this firsthand because I see it every day. They do not help them with the publicist that can work with them. They do not give them a stipend on time. You know, they tell them, we'll give you a stipend for you being our brand ambassador, but it would even come maybe six or even eight months later. Some of these fellows don't even have money to go to Uganda. Chef Tegei had um, an event in Uganda at uh, his, uh, he has a facility that he opened up in Uganda, I think two years ago. And he has really pulled in quite a lot of uh, athletes. Um, na, is it Nabonyo and uh, I think Kalual, Chimtai, all those athletes yeah. who come from the eastern region of Uganda and western region of Kenya, coming over towards the Mount Elgon area, going up north. They all train at Cheptegei's facility. Kenyans could not be able to afford just to go to that facility for a championship training exercise that they had. Why? Because that is the only money in athletics Kenya did not even care about it. Wow. And now this particular training facility that Chapter Gay opened, it's funded by the Ugandan government. And the Ugandan government told those guys, if you go outside of this country and you win, you come back home, we are going to receive you very well with a lot of accolades, prizes, nice presentations, and will give you a very good life. Tell me, how many houses do you think uh, Nanyonya owns right now? I think she has like three. Wow. All the medals she has brought in from out of the country, plus vehicles, you know? So what will stop anyone from Kenya from going outside the country where they can be appreciated for the effort done? Wow, Louis, this is so much to digest. You know, like, uh, I will read a couple of comments that were coming in while you are having this conversation, but I just want to bring this back to the studio. First of all, for us just to be able to just digest, you know, like what Louis has said, uh, make I'm going to come to you, but I'm going to start with Omosh here. Uh, maybe just give me your feelings about all these, uh, you know, like intricate details that Louis has been giving us on trying to understand, you know, like some of the struggles that Kenyan athletes are experiencing. Omosh. Um, you know, we've always known that uh, our, I was going to say our athletic bodies, uh, as well as the Kenya government, it's, it, 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 it's, 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 uh, their support is, um, uh, what's the right word? They only support you, like Louis saying, when, when, you're when you're winning. Yeah. Right. And even that support when you're winning is also, I would venture to say, questionable. Mm hmm. Uh, for for instance, somebody goes out, wins, comes back, and whatever your winnings are, you're already being taxed. Whatever they are, right? Fine, folks need to pay taxes or whatever. But after a while of you know playing this cat and mouse game of hide and seek with these guys, you also become amwerevu. Maybe you don't bring your money back. But just throwing that out there. But then the whole point of having the academies or having some sort of system where you nurture talent, you you go after them, and you help push them up. Even if the Kenyan government set it up at an amateur level, uh, a lot of times, um, as we have seen, when these folks go pro, whoever was that uh, nurtured this talent gets paid. So if you look at it as a way of investment and start at the bottom, and you say, okay, well, you know what? I'm going. I'm going to invest in these folks. I'm going to push them up. Worst case scenario, even if say they don't get picked up, at least they will have, you know, gone through this system, and maybe even they then they can become a coach in one of our 
academies or even you know have some way of uh, going to say Adidas or one of the other places and coaching in one of their facilities or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, I had the privilege of going to Atlanta and uh, attending uh, an Adidas event where Omanyala was there. There was a lot of chicks uh, or ladies. I would say chicks. A lot of ladies from Jamaica. And um, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, Chief Louis. The, the, the guy who was by himself, the one you took a picture with. Akine uh, Sembine. N- no, not, not, not him. Uh, the uh, the guy um, from Jamaica. Oblique Seville. That guy was by himself. The, the Seville guy who was in the finals. Yeah. Who did yep. We expected him to do better. Uh, something must have happened. He had a bad day in the office. Yeah. And anyway, that was a tough race. But that guy was hanging out with us like uh, me and you hung out. Yeah, he was he was there. In Let me tell you, in fact, Chief Louis took a picture with him, and he told me he's like, "You see this guy over here?" You know, after he took the picture, he said, you "See the guy I just took a picture with." As we are we are watching the guy walk into the bus, he's like, "That's the guy you need to watch." Like, you see that guy there? That guy is, and you know, me, I was like, "Oh, okay." And because Chief Louis was so excited to see the guy and hang out with him. Yeah, because Louis knows them. Correct. Yeah. Then now you turn around to Olympics. This is hardly what is it? It's uh, how, how three months, four months, uh, about four months. The guy is in the finals. You you know what I'm saying? So oh, remember, remember first of all, sorry to cut you short, Amosha. Mm-hmm. <coughs> after the <coughs> after they left uh, Adidas, correct um, exhibition, the they went to Jamaica, Jamaica yes. and he smashed the the record. the record. Yes. Okay. All right. And, and when you see the guy. Aki, the guy looked like a, a, a schoolboy cutting a, a. In fact, he was a dirty schoolboy with a Jamaican t shirt wearing. <laughs> cutting a, a backpack. Uh, uh, Chief Lou, have I lied? No, so, that's true. Even yeah. up photo evidence. Correct. Okay. So, right. so it, it, just to go back to, you, you know, back to your question, if we can find. Um, like, I think the Americans have. Uh, what do they call it? Is it. It's not an Olympic committee. What, what do they call that sports body? The one that has the, the athletes, that helps all the athletes and all of that. I, forget I, th- what I think there's it. a lot of different federations. It, it, that, uh, yes, but they have one large one, right? That's yeah. pre- US Athletics or something. Yeah. I think it's USA Athletics or something mm-hmm. like that. I, if we can establish something like that, that actually has. We do uh, have one, Athletics Kenya. What are they doing? So 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 here so here's the deal. Let me actually first of all go ahead and read some comments because a lot of comments have been coming in. What up on Ishambulias just saw my comments. Uh gonna go back to where people had started guessing, you know, who our guest is gonna be. Esther Mulusa is saying, uh Samido, uh Brown Sugar is saying Lina Sky Kai, you're both wrong. Uh and then Stephen JJ is talking about Ata Kiateka. This was back when uh, I think we're talking about the way corruption is in Kenya, that even caretakers and watchmen, you know, like, take place in the corruption. Hey, caretakers uh, are powerful. <laughs> that guy is very powerful. Yes, and then um, Apa, uh, let me see, uh, Esther says, psychological fatigue, delayed visas and lack of pay and lack of support of athletes by our government. That plays a part, especially in yeah. sports that have have very small mm-hmm. margins, like 100 meters races, you know, like any small thing, any small disturbance uh, can uh, can just put you completely off. Uh, and then Brenda Karibu Sana, Brenda says, uh, the Kenyan athlete scene is extremely sad. Some sports do not even have a working federation. Uh, and then Washeke says it boils down to lack of investment in sports. By now, we should have diversified into the other sports and actually excelling. Stephen JJ says, how about leaders have really affected our patriotism? Uh, and then Brown Sugar says, Kulikwana Crusade at uh, Nyayo Stadium. And then uh, Brown Sugar says, Eten training camps have been leased to foreigners because they pay more money. Now, Washeke, Bahrain seems to be doing... Uh, are killing with our athletics um and then uh let me see uh, brown sugar says eldoret express janet uh Jepkos gay is also doing it by herself um and then washeke says what louis is saying is heartbreaking my heart is broken for all these young people with so much uh talent but no one to support them and then I see Stephen JJ here saying highway secondary to machine the national championship in soccer alumni to metumiwa message ya kuchanga pesa ya matrack suit yani sisi kwa sisi no goodwill we are on our own and then uh, asleodwara nasema alanamu 
no but our name was actually meant to come on the show at some point we just were not able to put together the dates but the guest is not uh Alanamu. But remember the hints that were given. Uh, Madimples, uh, no, it was Madimples, it was uh, in Afraisha Mama. And then uh, the other one was, yeah, he's coming from Kenya. Uh, and then what was the other hint? I can't remember what other hint it was. But uh, yes. Ali Salimi Wanama likes. Oh, Ali Salimi Wanama likes. Nambake uh, was posted, what was Salimi, but Wamama ndo akanza kumkatia uko kwa simu. Aya sawa sawa. So. You can you can go ahead and continue guessing. So, Mika, let me come to you real quick. You know, just give us a brief uh, analysis uh, of just some of the things that uh, some of the very pertinent things that um, Louis was talking about, and and maybe what direction are we heading? Because as you know, this government, I totally don't have any faith in them. So at this point, if I'm looking at solutions. I'd be looking at solutions outside government because the, this current government, as it is set up, this uh, handshake, broad-based government, I don't have any hopes in it. But anyway, Mika. But you know, unfortunately now is that uh, anything that you do, you have to go through AK if you want to do anything that is uh, uh, anything that you can let's say you have a company you have money you want to start and uh, sponsor certain things you'll have to go through the federation especially due to tax ramifications and uh, unfortunately the federation they could have curtailed up up the local politicians you do remember when we were having that the agencies over here uh the one who was excited to go speak to ruto and one of the reasons he was excited was because he came from those running areas and he was going to talk about his friends who are training to become runners on what difficulties they are facing right like it gets to a point whereby in some areas it's controlled by the politician even who is going to get a chance when that time to come and go run abroad comes like you have to bribe him for you to go through so it's the, the, it's so bad that AK down to the little to the local politicians in the area frustrate the development of just even the local runners in that area even them just accessing those academies boils down to you who are you who and who who do you know what do you do like it, there's a lot of corruption on everybody wants to benefit now, so if you say that you tell a Safaricom to uh, help in nurturing this, you'll have to go through the AK, and unfortunately, AK will get away on how they want. They they will steal this. Now you see, uh, most of the people who build these training facilities are former athletes, are people who have been running before. They know how to deal with them. They know what to put in, but it's not enough. As Louis, as Louis uh, rightfully said out here. Uh, how do we fix this? Um, we fix this by enacting legislation that allows you to fund uh, sports and development on a broad social basis the way they do in Europe. You see the way in the UK, whereby uh, PE is compulsory, and the PE that is compulsory is not just PE, schools work with academies, schools work with other systems to be able to identify talent and talent is in various sports all the sports that they have out there you will find that your child will go through a certain sport in school to determine she's not sport able then at a co-excuse later on but at some point you will play some sport you will run you will hoop you will do everything they'll have to figure out is there talent here and once this talent create, create a clear pathway on how this is done so that where the private sector comes in, it comes in with the sports academies that are run by the clubs, that are run by individuals, that are run by uh, organizations. And together with the government, there's always a supply chain of talent that is coming through. These kids start playing these games when they're young. These kids start being developed when they're young. That is what the government needs to do. And sure, that is how it not be through uh, each individual federation give the federation money to no no you take care of that development and then where the federation comes in is when in that particular academy let's say if it's a soccer academy then kff will come in and what kff ensures is that the academies that these clubs are, have are set up to the are set up to 
basic government requirement on ensuring that education of these kids still continues with the development and you are oversight of how these clubs are running and competitions on that but nothing else money doesn't money for development doesn't go through the uh, the federations and we just have to hold the government accountable for that that is how we are going to solve that unfortunately before we get there the Minister of Sports got sworn in and flew to Paris. I mean, I could go shopping. Go to Arudi, so I'm going to go to Tashanga. Yes. So, uh, Mika, I yes. think um, I do agree with uh, everything you said there. Let me add on to something. The Governing Council of Athletics, the Governing Board of Athletics, and the IOC, plus the one for the Commonwealth Games, they will not talk or speak to a private entity that is sponsoring um, athletes from another country. They will only speak to a government entity. And whom do we have? In Kenya, it is athletics. Um, in 2022, we were at the brink of athletics Kenya and even Kenya itself being banned from um, competitions because of doping, if you remember. Around that time, we had 91 out of competition doping cases, and we had about 41 in competition doping cases. That put Kenya at a very bad spot with the IAF that Kenya had to show we are going to work on this to try and fix it. They didn't understand the reasons why doping had, you know, um, become such a prevalent situation in the uh, in Kenya, which way back before, we never heard about that. We were powerhouse, you know, in all sections. Trust me, probably, maybe, I would say um, minus anything lower than 800 meters, Kenya dominated everywhere, literally. Where did the doping come from? That's a topic that you can be able to also talk to governance of the country as a whole because of poverty, everybody's striving to make it. They want to do the best that they can. And they're realizing that other countries are also doing better because with time and the world becoming a global village, these other countries are finding out our training tactics, they're finding out our high altitude advantage that we have and our endurance training. And then coupled with science, when they go back to their countries and diet and how they try to switch it around and they do even better with proper governance. The Kenyan government decided to disband the whole entire AK literally in 2022. I think we ran without Athletics Kenya for almost eight years. It was being ran by some, I think, uh, interim kind of um, shoddy, um, you know, um, set up if I'm not wrong for some reason, until when they finally decided to put up something when they were told that if we continue having this kind of in-competition cases, then there's going to be a problem. We had a few people who were banned. I think Abel Kipsang was one of them. We had, um, um, Chep Getich, which is also another one who was also banned. We had uh, Chep Kosge, who was banned for two years. We had um, this uh, Rono, who was banned for five years, four years. We've had quite a number of them that are banned, and Kenya was trying to show that they're trying to adhere to IAF. Now, where were we having these loopholes that we're having people who are doping and still being allowed to go and compete? It is cartels. And who's running this cartel? The politicians. There you go. You just answered yourself. Wow. Wow. That has been the problem. Uh, you know, like, with what's happening in the country right now, I feel like sending uh, Gen Z's to go and do an analysis of what's happening. Because these Gen Z's have been very effective at, uh, at uncovering stuff. And you know the... The interesting thing in Kenya is that these corruption cases, they are hidden in plain sight. You know, like uh, these reports on doping, reports on theft of money, uh, all of them, you know, like if you go online and do a Google search, you will find articles, you will find documents available of, um, of what's happening. But then, you know, like, uh, I mean, of course, I've lost my trust in government, but, but Louis brings a very important point those international bodies are not going to engage with private entities. So it either has to be a government entity or a government-sanctioned 
entity. Uh, but then, and, 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 and you know, yeah, b b before you come in, Mika, you know, like, and Mika, like you were talking about um, legislation, you know, like to me, when I hear that L word, and I'll call it the L word, I, I get concerned because Kenya has all kinds of legislation. Even when it comes to sports, if you just go to kenyalaw.org or any other website. I, I actually wanted laws. to correct that the, the use of that word. I wanted to not use, I wanted to use the R word. I wanted to say regulation. Regulation. Okay. Okay. Regulation. Yeah. Yes. And you know, regulation has to do with the executive taking action, which has been the problem because all they want is dialogue. You know, like whenever there's a problem, they tell you task force. Dialogue. No, but pro proper regulation, you know, like when you, when you have proper regulation in place whereby you know that you are the governing body of the sports. Yes. As opposed, you see, like the NBA can do whatever it wants with basketball. Yes. As long as it's within the regulations that Congress has put for them. Yes. For sports federations. Right? Yeah. Yes. They can do it. They can run it the way it is. The moment Congress says that, ah, 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 they will have to ship. And that is what is needed in Kenya also. AK, K, F, FKF, uh, Kenya Rugby, KBF, all those federations, let them deal with the governing bodies on the world. But they have to do what the government tells them to do. And what the government tells them to do needs to be something that has been set to work to favor the people and to grow the sport in the country. And now, Mika, you see when it comes to back to what this mandamanos, what Gen Z's were talking about, which is why I've really identified uh, with, 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 with their movement and just what they're talking about. You see, for example, uh, the regulation, of course, it's the executive, uh, the government that's in power. Mm -hmm. But then you do have a parliament that's supposed to be oversighting. But because of this monster called CDF, um MPs no longer oversight you know like uh, and that CDF has been kind of like a pocketbook uh, that where they use it for corruption and mm -hmm. enriching themselves so now the core task that they have that's oversighting because this is where now uh if we had you know like people in parliament who are vested in sports who have you know like personal interest in sports maybe because a lot of their constituents are participating in sports or maybe just because it's also a major national issue this is where now the oversighting should have been on overload you know like what exactly is athletics um kenya doing which is why i uh, you know like uh, one of the things that we missed out on um under the old constitution that we had was a system of having you know like a shadow cabinet which i think that that's something that we should try and bring back because now we've been away from it for quite a number of years a shadow cabinet is where you have uh, a cabinet inside parliament of the opposing party where you have a cabinet minister for all ministries finance trade uh sports and their day-to-day -day job is to oversight and 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 there's even an assistant minister there's a whole structure to oversight so there's people who assign certain tasks to oversight as we know right now our parliament is completely broken uh it's been totally captured so there's no trust uh there's no trust in them anymore in giving us and providing us with solutions uh to this uh problem so we're actually between a rock and a hard place a uh, couple of comments more comments are coming in before i come back to the, the panel and louis uh guests are still coming on who the guest is gonna be for those who are just tuning in we are gonna have a major guest before the end of this month uh we want you to guess who it's gonna be hints were given he's from kenya um he has a smile uh, that makes uh uh our mama want to dm him uh i'm gonna add another hint because it seems uh, like people are not uh, getting but but before i uh, before i give the other hint, let me read some of the names that were coming through of course leo was saying alanamu uh, linus kai kai no that's not the one linus uh and then esther mulusa <laughs> is saying peter kenneth i peter kenneth is so 20 years ago uh i don't even know if anyone uh even cares about him anymore uh but uh it's not peter kenneth uh and then uh slay saying eric latif the interesting thing about these answers is that uh uh, the ladies on over here are revealing which smiles they like. But uh True that. so up as Lena Sema Larimado and then uh Brown Sugar Nasema Jalas or Jeff Koinangi. Well hmm. okay. 
All right. Interesting. No, no it's not. I mean, what's what's I mean, you hint in Okay, watch, 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 uh, alafu anasema Hussein Khalid inaonekana sile anapenda ma activist spear yeye ni mtu anapenda maandamano maandamano nini but no it's not those uh, anapenda ma bad boy yes and then Abraham Chuga anasema Slay is just throwing names of her crush of your of you okay and, <laughs> and then uh Evans hey, hey Evans Marube may come in another tangent but i like Evans Marube's direction Evans Marube is going towards the right Ana direction. Karibia. Ana Karibia. Amesema Babu Owino, but of course it's not Babu Owino. Uh, surely. Uh, and then, Washeke Nirangu anasema Gaitho. Now, which Gaitho? There's two Gaithos. There's Masharia uh, and there's Frank. So, for fun, when Gaitho, you, you, you can pick either you can one. Pick you, can pick, you, can you, like. you can pick either one. You can pick the one that you like. Uh, either the, the, the one, one who was picked, the one was picked by the cops or the one who went to the cops. Oh, okay. The one went to the cops. Pick anyway, one. Mika, tupatie, tupatie hint nyingine because inaonekana hapa. Ah, yeah. Hii hint mkifaila tuwapatie hint nyingine. Hii hint was easy. We discussed about his political path last week on the show. Okay, yeah. And that, that's wow. a very good hint. So you already know it's a politician. Uh, you already know it's a politician and we we discussed him. Uh, I think it was last week or the week before last it week. It was last week. Uh, so no, last week. Yeah, it was last week. Mm. Okay, sawa, sawa. So very good hints. Eh, hey, maze Mika kwa hizi ma hints inaonekana yani ni mtu amezisomea so that's a very dosage, good hint. Pode pode, dosage. Yeah. yeah so okay so let's um coming back uh to to louis um because a lot of these things that a lot of the questions that i had you've already kind of um answered them and i think uh slay and washeke were the first ones to find uh the right answer and yes edwin sifuna is gonna be in studio uh on the 20 on friday the 23rd of august so start preparing for it uh we want to make sure that we milk this opportunity as much as possible for you avid listeners of the one mic show you're the first ones to know we have confirmed uh that edwin sifuna will be in studio on the 23rd uh, coming to attend uh the democratic national convention that's gonna be happening starting the 19th uh, in Chicago, and as soon as they leave Chicago, they will be coming here. So, Mtarisha uh, Maswalienu, and please, Mtu Asinulize Nambayo. Masinulize kwa DM. Yeah, stories are kuingia kwa DM. There are very serious issues we are dealing with right now in Kenya. Wacha tu soti kitu. <laughs> Wacha tu soti issues, issues kwanza, and then mambo ya DM, itakuja. Itakuja baadaye. Uh, but asante so, sana. So, Ali, unasema Uhuruma is uh, just an estate. Uh I I don't know. I don't know. We we will find out if Huruma is an estate. Nah. But but we want to milk this opportunity. Oh uh, 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 <laughs> 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 You know there will be there will be calling so 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 all be prepared. Be prepared. Uh we want to make it as interactive as possible. We want to make Na it as, kwa studio. Yes, you want to make it as impact. What we text us if you are in town, we'll give you priority. If you ca- if you if you come to town, we we will let you come. We we'll let you come to studio. You come all the way from Texas. At least we'll pretend you've come to see us. Boss. Hata kama ni sifuna mekuja kwa. Uzi same if you know some people can book right now. They have Delta credit. Well, ni sawa, you know mnaweza kuja as you know, Omosh has a very very big house. Uh, and they, they they will always be space. Uh, there will always be space. Yes. You know, just in case you don't have anywhere to uh to to spend the night. And then, ahead. Yeah, and then Yeah, no, so so I I I I know you know like what what attack a story I'm a DM nanini, but there's very serious issues uh, confronting <laughs> Kenya, <laughs> so at least let's deal with that during the show. But, but, uh, Whatever anyway, happens what after the show. To, what we want to ask you is this: yeah. uh, You've heard him speak. You had him at some point. He was nearly like the political face of the Mandamano. Yes. And then you've heard him speak about the, his stance with the, where ODM is. So we want you to prepare questions. Yes. Hard questions. He can handle hard questions. Yes, hard tackles. Right. Don't don't be scared. And not who are you don't dating? Be not questions like the who are you dating? Or who did you cheat? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We want you to prepare questions. We want you to. We want it to be an engaging session. We want it to be a point whereby it's not only us asking questions. It's you, the listeners, who have any burning questions. So, if you have any burning questions based on anything political in Kenya, I I can guarantee. I can. You want to ask about. ODM about the about the inclusive government about, about Mandamano about yeah. Senate mm -hmm. about what they're doing anything prepare yourself for Friday is it the twenty third or it's, Fri it's Friday the twenty third it's Friday 23rd. the twenty third of August yeah yeah Friday the twenty third of August prepare questions for Honourable Edin Sipuna yeah and also know that that twenty third of August that's gonna be uh, the last episode before we take a, a break. In fact, this time we've extended it more. We're gonna take a, a break, you know, Labor Weekend. Uh, we will confirm uh, when uh, when we're gonna when we're gonna come back. But uh, but yeah, just prepare what you're gonna be doing those Fridays. After I want to tell you before, but because you guys are very loyal to us, you're very loyal listeners. You are the first ones to know, even before we publish it, even before we print out the flyer. So be prepared, and of course, you know, like feel free to share it with others who may want to participate uh in the show uh, i'm gonna come to louis you know like uh to get to know what he may want to ask uh, uh what he wants us to ask sifuna or if he's gonna call him and ask him a question because he's in the senate uh i don't know how much the role of the senate is when it comes to matter sports i know the oversight what's what's being done in the counties there's there's funding for sports within the counties so i'd like to hear from louis but before that let me read a couple of comments here uh, that came in right after that big announcement was made. Um, I can see uh, Slay is telling Brown Sugar E for effort. Uh, and then Washeke, as soon as he got the news that Sifuna is going to be coming, she said, let me start dusting off my wig. Okay. Sawa sawa. And then uh, Brown Sugar says, mkona namba yake, nikona swali nataka kumuliza. Okay, so me, 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 our responsibility is during the, what happens, you know, like after the show, apo sasa, you know, izo, izo ni shaurizenyu, but, um, uh, Slay Anasema, please, is there a reward for guessing right? Eh, Slay. Yawa. <laughs> is this? <laughs> eh, we are, we are, we are. Uh, upper, upper, we are, we are, we are struggling. comment group. It is not, it is not PG ready. Yeah, and then Washeke and Asema, I will start drinking olive oil so my voice is soft and smooth. Hey, Washeke, can it get any smoother than it already is? Uh, but uh, I guess for Sen <laughs> Senator Sifuna, uh, olive oil it is. Uh, Brown Sugar says, Kwanza Sahi, ndiyo mnatupatia ideas. Address Kilimanjaro Studios Marahio. First of all, you have to confirm that you're in town. We have to have confirmation that you internet kupati to address if you of your view and then you send uh, a representative yeah. atutaki izo hapo you, you send uh, uh, the embassy to come and check yeah 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 we do we, we atutaki izo hapo and then um washeke and sema so i can call in i think that this you we give people an, an opportunity on zoom ndo watu waonekane na ma outfit na ma zoom ndo 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 waonekane wajulikane but but we'll figure that out when that day when that day comes I'm, i don't know whether kuwapatia watu your zoom option itakuwa too complicated but we'll we'll figure that out uh, and then no, simu. Yeah. Zoom kutoka. <laughs> then brown sugar anasema niko na hard questions hard uh, i don't know exactly what that means but uh, brown sugar anasema niko na hard questions uh, and then uh, we will have been worried if the questions were wet okay eh, okay wow Okay, that is wow. not wow. Um, wow. Again, that's Mika's uh, opinion, and Omosh, it's not. These are not things that the one my show is endorsing. Okay, all right, <laughs> good. There you go. Uh, <laughs> sour, sour. So again, you know that was that was a big announcement. I'm glad you guys engaged us and you're able to uh, to guess it right. But uh, Louis Quaco, if you get a chance, you know, like if you're available. And you want to ask a question to Senator Sifuna about this current situation. I know he's a senator. What what, what question would you ask him, or what direction would you take that conversation, Louis? Uh, I think uh, Kenyan politics is very tiresome. Um, I would <laughs> it, ask him what's is. the purpose of the opposition, him being the SG, 
okay. of Steve Rowe and how does he feel when his friends who are vehemently um, talking negative or um, the opposite of the current UDA government, now that they've joined the government, why is he having a soft spot for them? What purpose is it? It's like they're just betraying the people. Wow. Okay. All right. So, so I, I mean, I, 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 I think Louie and I think Lou, I think Chief Louie and Ali have been in the same Nini WhatsApp group. No, somewhere. no, I mean, of course, you know, like it, it's very disappointing, you know, like what has happened because now things that should be matters of priority have taken, you know, like arrest as this new marriage is being has just been consummated coalition uh and uh and, broad based and and of course uh there are so many things like like these issues happening at the olympics right now preparation remember that video you sent me on a mic of um of uh, marathon silver medalist 1988 solo olympic games douglas waki waki yep. yes who was saying other countries are preparing the athletes i've been for prepared four years, years. Correct. For four years. Well, it once is a, it's a four-year preparation for once, Olympics. Once, yes. once Olympic in Mekwisha, you know, like all all these other, the ones who are in the Olympics and the ones who will potentially make the next Olympic, they already have coaches. Yeah, Munenga Training they, School. They already have... It's a job. They have dietitians. They have people who are guiding them what they're going to be doing for the next three months, for the next six months. Mm. You know, like slowly by slowly as they build up towards uh, as they build up towards uh, Olympics. Uh, in Kenya, mm. you know, like as long as there's no international competition, like what Louis told us, Nenden Yuko, Mkajisot, and then when it's time for trials for, for Olympic Jenny, trials, you, you come back and uh, yeah, you see. Yeah, which is a very Juakali way of doing this. And the way Kenya is such a sporting powerhouse, uh, I was very sad, you know, to learn that uh, this new education system that they. Um, that they introduced CBC. called CBC, they have not integrated sports because my thing was uh, Kenya is such a sporting powerhouse. I think it's very important to integrate sports as part of the physical education curriculum, you know, like in so, such a way where talents can start being nurtured, where there's funding to start nurturing these talents from a very, very early stage. We want to ask here, you know, like countries like Brazil. They already knew about Neymar when he was six years old. The, I mean, like, like, the, like, the tw they already someone already knew about him. You know, like, you know, these scouts have ways of detecting that this small kid can potentially become a very big star. You know, which we totally don't have. I think the first big stage mm -hmm. that uh, soccer players get, maybe even and athletes, is in, in is yeah, in high provincial high, high school, school meets. Yeah. You know, which which by that time. It's too late when you look at international right. competition. Mika, you had something you wanted to add. No, no. For me, yeah, I mean, and I totally agree with you. But then the thing is, which I don't, uh, I totally agree with you because you look at, if you look at, you look at Bukayo Saka, if you Google Bukayo Saka right now, you will find pictures of him as a three-year-old, four-year-old, running with with a ball, right? Kobe Mino, uh, Cole Palmer, all these young football players. Marco Rios in their specific country. You find a picture of them somewhere in playing three, four, five, five aside games as kids and they're developing and, and they're being developed into that. So for me, I I totally don't understand how as a country that's supposed to be sporting, as a country that is thinking that we have so much talent and you know what you depend on in kenya is talent because kenya knows that we will have runners who will qualify for the olympic time when the time for the olympic comes we will have runners so they're confident about that the only thing the, the only thing that ak thinks about is we have the quality we have the talent we'll always have runners but the thing is if this talent was nature if this talent was was uh, given all the opportunities was given. As I said earlier on, the 100 meters was won by very small margins. And those small margins will go back to how did you prepare for this race? Right? It goes back to your four-year preparation and up to your final day preparation. Okay. But how did you prepare for this race? Remember, remember what you said, Bill used to say that 
he prepared for nine seconds for nearly 18 months. For those nine seconds, that was going to run. He actually said to win a race. it took him five years to run nine seconds. Yes. Yeah. So, and world record. I remember I was listening to an interview that he did uh, during the summer when he was playing for Soccer Raid. And he it was a con he was he used to say him and his coach how they used to train. They used to say that they will train, then it gets to a point that he tells the coach, I need a break. I cannot increase my speed anymore from here. And the coach would look at him and tell him, Okay, take a month break. And that month break he said he would go everywhere, party and he wasn't drinking. He knew what how he knew he, he used to maintain himself. But he will go everywhere because it's what? It's not his body, it's his mind. And then once he comes back, his mind has relaxed, he's gone back, reset to life, he's hanged up with his friends, women, everything, drinking, party, comes back, gets back to training. And he himself would tell the coach, I'm ready, let's book a race. That's how in tune he was with his body. So yeah. when we expect that Ali has won as a gold this year, and then we forget about Ali. Ali, we don't care how he does. Ali has to figure out himself. As we are saying, many of them might win the first race, and it's not a big paying race. They still need money to be coming in to take care for themselves, so they can be able to train and qualify for a money paying race. And this is another thing that we spoke about the other show. If we had those money races in Kenya, we wouldn't be having a lot of these problems. We don't even have any major race in kenya and we have all the talent that that is that, we, that is very sad like yeah like we can finance we, we can we can actually finance our athletics because we have the field already getting the sponsors and getting the world organizations to come and give us a, a money race we can we can provide the the runners okay. why we don't have it Sijui. I sawa sawa Mika. I wanna first remind the listeners that you're still tuned in to the one mic show and I'm your host and producer Ali Badawi. Of course on the show tonight we have uh Kenyan uh, athletic fanatic and passionate recreational runner Louis Achungo. Louis of course is talking about Kenya's performance at the ongoing Olympics and some of the struggles that uh the Kenyan team was experiencing. We'll shortly uh be we'll shortly be asking why US sprinter Noah Lyles blamed COVID on his 200 meters finals loss.